Hi, I'm Anthony L. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River, bringing you another hot and fiery Black Memphis history lesson. I'm Anthony L. Elmore, Memphis' first independent theatrical filmmaker. Memphis, Tennessee is the most populated Black city in America. While we are America's most populated black city in America, our Memphis past is so troubling, whereas Memphis does not have an acknowledged chronological, chronological black Memphis history. Now, black Memphis chronological history is troubling. You see, in 2018, we in Memphis celebrated our 200 bicentennial celebration, whereas I was the first in Memphis history to write, produce, direct, and do a narrative video title, 200 Years of Black Memphis History. My video was not allowed to be an official part of the Memphis bicentennial celebration in 2019. You see, Memphis has a culture of white supremacy, racism and black on black racism whereas me as a filmmaker was not allowed to be a part of our 200 bicentennial celebration now you see in Memphis Tennessee via this posting in April of 2024 the city of Memphis will not acknowledge the fact that me Anthony F. Elmore, a black man, is the father of the theatrical independent filmmaking in Memphis, whereas in 1988, I wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the first independent film in Memphis history called The Contemporary Gladiator. Now, while I'm here today to narrate a video for the website I created called Black Memphis History.com. Why we in Memphis are the most populated city of black people in America, there exists a planned strategy in Memphis to control black history narrative. You see, my story today is titled Black Memphis History, Henry Lowe, the white Memphis mayor who initiated the death of Dr. King. You see, Henry Lowe was a good old white boy, like the ones who Donald Trump spoke about in August of 2017 during this event where white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and others far-right groups gathered to protest the removal of a statue of General Robert E. Lee from a local park. Such was the kind of man who Henry Lowe was during his first term as mayor Low call for white unity, electrical ticket to oppose the black man, Russell B. Sugarman, who was running for public works commissioner. See, Low demanded that other candidates get out of the race to have only one white and to not to split the white boys vote against a black opponent. There's a proverb that says, one picture is worth a thousand words. And what I want to show you is a picture of Henry Lowe, whereas during the Memphis Shelby County uh, sanitation strike in 1968. This is a picture where our Memphis mayor, Henry Lowe, had a shotgun under his desk when talking to people. Now, what kind of mayor who has a police department will walk around and have a shotgun under his desk? This tells you so much about the character of Henry Lowe. He was certainly a good old boy. You see, Lowe was a conservative who supported segregation, advocating for separate but equal facilities, and describing court-ordered integration as anarchy. During his 1967 election campaign, he voiced increasingly antagonistic views regarding civil rights and labor, refusing concessions to black.
black union workers. You see, Henry Lowe campaigned on white supremacy and a promise not to make concession advancements to 70% of the Memphis Police Department in 1968 was Ku Klux Klan members. See, Dr. King was a, was our king, but Dr. King was in King Cotton. You see, Memphis was founded in 1819 by white racist President Andrew Jackson, who was a slave owner and the father of ethnic cleaning, whereas in, on May the 28th, 1930, he put the Native Americans on reservations, whereas he passed the Indian Removal Act. You see, what happened in Memphis, Tennessee was, Memphis was founded for one reason, and that is white gold, cotton. And because Memphis was founded on cotton, it was a place where to bring slaves and make that money through cotton. You see, cotton was the cap capital, Memphis was the cotton capital of the world, whereas the white Memphian, Nathan Bedford Forrest, became the richest man in Tennessee, and he founded the Negro Mart in Memphis, Tennessee, whereas Memphis became the slave capital of the world. Look at the picture of an 1855 ad in the Commercial Field newspaper advertising the Negro Mart. You see, Nathan Bedford Forrest is the most honored white man in Tennessee who has a Tennessee holiday named after him. You see, the reason he's so famous is because on April the 12th, 1864, Nathan Bedford Forrest's greatest victory was the massacre of Fort Pillow Whereas, as a Confederate general, he killed and massacred black soldiers that earned him and his Confederate soldiers the logo of the Ku Klux Klan. Look at this picture of the Ku Klux Klan. This is Nathan Bedford Forrest when he killed the black soldiers at Fort Pillow. Now, Fort Pillow, you may not know what Fort Pillow is, but many of you have heard of Hennon, Tennessee. Hen in Tennessee is just down the road, about 40 miles from Memphis. This is the place where Alex Haley told the story of Roots. This is where Hen in Tennessee is, you see. In fact, when Memphis Mayor Henry Lowe left office in 1973, assuredly he could have won re-election. See, Memphis via his efforts to press black advancements and gaining the honor of creating a space whereas Dr. Martin Luther King was killed in Memphis, April 4th, 1968. You see, in August of 1967, the FBI created the Contail Pro, or the Counter Intelligence Pro, whereas black nationalist groups like the SCLC, or the Black Panthers, or black leaders, they were targeted by the FBI for counterintelligence, and they were spied upon, unlawfully spied upon. That's just the counter until pro movement. You see, King, Dr. King was identified as a target because the FBI believed that he could become a messiah who could unify black nationalists should he abandon his supposed obedience to white liberal doctrines, nonviolence, and embrace black nationalism. You see, according to the U.S. Senate Committee, convened in the 1970s to investigate the FBI's domestic intelligence operations. The impact of the FBI's efforts to discredit the SCLC and Dr. King on the civil rights movement is unquestionable. Memphis Mayor Henry Lowe, a white supremacist, whereas 70% of the Memphis Police Department were Ku Klux Klan members. Memphis via Mayor Henry Lowe provided the ideal culture and the best place in America to assassinate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Please view our other videos to learn more about our white supremacist Memphis Mayor Henry Loeb, who was in office when Dr. King got killed in Memphis on April 4th, 1968. I'm Anthony F. Elmore in downtown Memphis on the mighty Mississippi River, bringing you another hot and fiery.
Black Memphis History Lesson. <laughs>